Hey guys, welcome back to Five Drinks for Midnight. Today we're going to talk to Michael Ciccone. Let's log in and see what he's doing. All right. All right, Michael, thank you so much for joining us. Five drinks or midnight, five questions, five drinks, midnight, whatever comes first. Uh, so I guess the first thing is, what are we drinking first? The uh, first drink we're drinking today is the Maple Whiskey Sour, which is a bottled craft cocktail that I'm producing out here on the East uh, West Coast. Excuse me. Hello. And it is, uh, it's my desire to reach beyond the bar to the person across from the bar, but to reach everybody excellent excellent all right well so here we go make sure that's great all right cheers my friend cheers indeed so good to be here oh that's ooh. that's awesome all right so our first question from barman to mixology instructor to published author to journalist to instructor to basically you're a jack of all trades. How did we get into this business? One. Oh my god, it is so funny because I owe this all to my brother. Oh, because my parents let me study anything I wanted to in college. Bless them, like whatever would call my fancy. And those two things were dance and philosophy. Like the two most non-lucrative majors, this guy, double major. <laughs> and so it took me five years to get my bachelor's and my brother takes me aside and goes, you know, just just maybe you want to do something where you can make some money while you're, you know, getting started. So why don't you do a two-week bartending course in San Antonio, Texas, out in the boonies? where we literally learned to shake and stir and strain and make cocktails with colored water. And to this day, I still use information from that. So, I used to, so that's how I started. So then I moved to New York, right? I get, uh, to go to graduate school. And how do you pay the rent? Food service industry. Graduate from graduate school, graduate from graduate school, working in the bars and restaurants the whole while. And then I realized after me, my dear friend Netta, and my partner Margie produce a show I woke up that Sunday after doing a run of three shows, and I just said, hey, that's it, I'm done. And I went to the bar, and the bar there were people three deep wanting drinks, not even good drinks. I was a crappy, I was a bartender. Like, I wasn't a cocktail person. So this was like 96, I was making Cosmos. And I realized I could channel my creativity into this, into this as a craft. So it was like right on the, it was Dale DeGroff, I think, who inspired me most in terms of, taking back the mantle of craftsperson to bartending and mixology. And so from now on, it was like, da, 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 da. like, how can I keep exploring this? How can I have fun with this? What else is going on? And so that's basically how I ended up both stuck and happy to be in the food service industry. That's awesome. I mean, that that's a good problem to have. And then how, how did like M Squared Spirit start then? I mean, like this like when this showed up the other day i was so excited because i was like oh my god this is amazing like this is like the perfect bottle size this is so fucking cool oh man thank you so much so that came about because in california i came out here in 2010 after a stint in uh, long stints in new york so in california they have this liquor license where you can buy old booze rectify it which used to mean just put some water in it and put in a bottle but now rectify just means to change or to adjust or to correct and you can then distribute it yourself and it costs like 500 bucks because nobody wants to do that it is an enormous pain in the ass so many bureaucracies you have to deal with and i looked at that and i was like wait my cameo fashion is basically shelf stable by itself just on its own why not put that in a bottle and sell it and uh my uh business partner and boss and your friend Mika Diaz, the other M of the M squared spirits, um, was like, yes, do that. And of course, being a bartender, I was like, oh, paperwork. And she just calmly focused me, pointed me in the right direction, and I've been running ever since. That's awesome. I mean, th this is freaking great. I mean, so cheers to you, my friend. The most hopeful success, because I, I gotta tell you, like, th this was perfect. And now tasting it, like, that's damn good. So like, that's, yeah, that's thank you. freaking awesome. Well, cheers to that. Here, Tim. That is high praise indeed. Uh, no, no, that I, it is good. It is really, really good. Like that is, 
That is awesome. So cheers to you, my friend. Cheers. All right. All right, on to question two. So first, what's our second drink? Second drink is what I have termed a fractured Boulevardier. And it came about for two reasons. One is because I work behind a wonderful bar in San Francisco called Alembic. And they have an exquisite selection of spirits behind me. And so when people ask for something special, I think, take one of the most simple cocktails, Boulevardier, bourbon, sweet from with Campari, and fracture each of those elements into two parts so it becomes much more complex. And so, you know, once you've been doing it for as long as we have, you and I, in this drinking game, parsing out all the different flavors in there is kind of a fun game. And now that I'm stuck at home and I have just random bottles and I want to move them, I just am taking whatever I get my little hands on, putting it in, life is good. Excellent. Well, I went in, I should have went with the coupe. I, I went with the, the tumbler. So apologies on that, but cheers. That looks beautiful. Cheers. Oh, that's nice. I like that breakdown. Mm. It's just fun. All right, so question two. You've worked for, uh, so you worked for Peter Hoffman at Savoy and the Back 40. Uh, his whole thing was farm to table. Like he was kind of known as the godfather of farm to table in New York City. Like what did you take away from his kind of philosophy and bring it into the bar world? So Peter Hoffman, who was a wonderful man, adored working for him, but at Savoy, he just hired me to run the bar and said, do for the bar what I do in the kitchen, which is go to the Union Square Farmer's Market, see what's fresh, see what's in season, put that into drinks. And so immediately, and it just, I just love it so much, he put handcuffs on me and said, you can't use every ingredient in your hands. I'm like, in New York City, you can get anything. Anything, right there, yeah, yeah. right there. And he said, no, you can't use it. And I was like, holy shit. Get to there, you know, get get to the market, see what they have. So it's easy, late, late, late summer, early fall, you got grapes, you got berries, it's super simple. Then you got the winter, you've got beets and squash. And then early in the spring, you've got rhubarb. And some, I you know, it's just there's really challenging things, but the whole thing that he gave me was really appreciating constraints. Absolute freedom terrifies me, absolutely. And secondly is the idea of taking that, which is solid, and making liquid to go into a cocktail. And um, I would like to think I gave him a more of appreciation of cocktails. Excellent. And what they're capable of being. And, you know, we'll see when he sees this, what, what he says. But yeah, you know, uh, to this day, we're, we're, we're still in touch. And it's, it is a seminal thing. Because, again, if it's always amazing to get what's in season, to work seasonally, as opposed to just always being offering everything all the time. And so, even though I now live in California where everything is always in season all the time, I still go to the farmer's market and see what I can find. Excellent. So, there we go, drink two done, it's so easy. I love it, this is totally working. All right, on to drink three. What are we drinking? We're drinking a fancy pina colada. Excellent. And this drink has a very special place in my heart because this is both the first drink that I stole and the first time my mind was officially blown. And that is 2000. That is Milk and Honey on the Lower East Side. That's Slash Petrosky's flagship bar. And I ordered a pina colada because I said, sure, I'd like some rum. And they bring this to me. And it blew my mind because I just come back from Mexico. And I was like, a pina colada is abused workers on the beach bar with the blender, making it with the, the Mariscana yeah. chair and the whole nine yards. And he uses great ingredients classic technique and a fancy garnish and it was it was it was the first time i saw just how far one could go with classic mixology and it just to this day i teach in class because i love the lesson it taught me and i want to teach it everyone else so excellent it's a fancy pina colada well cheers i went the attaboy route so the Long sam tiki. ross same same thing just in a tiki mug as they serve it so because i don't have your fancy uh glass that you have so i, I kept it the attaboy route which is now or was milk and honey and so Beautiful. but Beautiful so lineage. all right yeah, cheers my friend cheers oh, i can't go wrong 
You can't go wrong. I mean, it, it is every bit as delicious and fulfilling as any peanut butter you have without just the yes. Oh, it's yeah. Yeah. And that was a, he did the same thing. I don't know if you remember this, but um, the way he would do a, a, a white Russian vodka and glue on the bottom and then a half whipped layer of cream on top. To this day, if you order a white Russian from me, I don't care how busy it is. I'm gonna make it that way. And I'm thinking of Sasha every time. I've, I've had some great influences in my life. Sasha, unbeknownst to him, I never got a chance to work with him, but I, I just so knew of him. And back in the day, you had to call, yep. and you talk to all of your buddies in the restaurant industry and see who had the fucking number. Yep. Because he would change it every month, and it drove me crazy. But you know, so from afar, he was uh, one, of, one of my idols. And Pete Holtman is like, you get these people who do farm to table or classic things and they just do it so well. And I was just like, I want to go to there. Excellent. Okay, so question three. You talked a little bit about it on your uh, Instagram stories, your training class this week, but what's your one cocktail that you go in that you order to like see if the bartender is actually any good? Oh my God, that is so funny. I should bring this up. For the longest time, it's been the margarita. Yeah. Which is just a great cocktail, but there's something about the way people make it. And there's also something about just the idea you just want to go to a place and get, keep your eyes open, right? Don't go into a place and be so, I mean, you go to a place to be with your friends, right? But you gotta keep your eyes open. So let your friends order first, watch the bartender, see what they're pouring, see how they're pouring and see if everything comes from a gun, yep. you know? And like, you can just tell so much, see if they uh, ask if salt or not, if they're using triple sec or Cointreau, how much they're shaking. Listen, because I'll tell you what size uh, and shake the ice is. Right? Um, are they rinsing their tins afterwards? I mean, you can just tell a thousand and one things from that. And then also, you've got the DNA of the bar, which is, it's balance, it's palate. And so for the fancy bars, obviously for dive bars, I love a dive bar margarita. Sure. Don't get me wrong. I might be a high and snob, but was it? I'm neat on the streets, but a freak in the sheets? I don't know, anyway. Uh, yeah. Um, I adore that so it's not that i'm judging it i'm just i want to notice it if i want that i'm going but in fancy places you can get the tenor of the barn where the balance is because you know i don't know like if you've been around bartenders and we're kind of dialing a drink in the house begins to have its own kind of um setting so if you go to germany the entire palette is sweet and so you go and you drink at bars like holy crap like every single cocktail is a hair sweeter than i would want it it's because that's their palate sure and so you can tell that from the margarita. You can see the technique, see the flavors, and it's just, yeah, it's 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 the it's it's the bar. It's it's the cocktail. Excellent. On to question four. Almost done. Oh, I can do this forever too. Come on. Uh, excellent. Uh, so I guess our fourth question is, what are we drinking? This, oh my good friend, is the red and the black. It is uh, named from a customer as Savoy, uh, it's based on a Stendhal novel, so I love like the, the intersection of the arts, like people who are good at words make words, and I steal them from my drinks. Uh, and this is the first successful cocktail that I made seasonally. This was after three iterations of working with strawberries every single year, I finally managed to combine a kind of a, a savory aspect to it, and then a neat little technique up here with the rim, with the rim, where you don't get a choice. So you get to the drink, you go through the rim, okay. and they come together. My choice. Excellent. Micromanaging everything. Uh, fresh mild strawberries, the strawberries in the market at Union Square are the best. Little tiny pack of flavor. Yeah. And when we opened up Bag 40, this this cocktail, we sold like 4,000 in one summer season. And so it's just, it was commercially successful as well. So it's, this is, this is my proudest, proudest progeny. Excellent. Cheers, Cheers my friend. Oh, that's fucking delicious. Question four. What's your hangover remedy? Oh, my God. We're gonna love this, we're gonna love this. Time. That's it, buddy. That's okay. it, time. Hangovers are hilarious because I've done years and years of research into them. Personally, like guinea pig right here. Right, yep. And I've come to the conclusion that the only reason you get hangovers is because you drink too much. <laughs> Period. Yeah. Like, that's it. So, the old wives are like, we're wine before beer, 
Mm-hmm. Paper before this and the little rhymes and everything. I don't care. I don't care. Yeah. Hangovers happen. They're always going to. They're yeah. always lurking around the corner of every good time because the better you're having, like, the better time you're having, the more likely you're going to want that extra drink. Or do that last shot of the night. Don't do that last shot. <laughs> yeah. Something. Do that. Like, right over. Don't, yeah. don't worry about it. Right. Or say no thanks. It doesn't matter. Um, but when it does happen, here's what I like to do. My hangover remedy is reminiscing. As I, as I lie in bed in my dark room <laughs> in life and living, I just think, God, I had such a good time last night. Here's the reason I did this. So if you drink too much, have a great night. Get a hangover and just give yourself some time. It's, 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 you got to give yourself a pass. All right. So on to our fifth and final question of the night. Bye. Not even midnight yet. We're all good. I guess the first thing is, is what are we drinking? You're drinking the best shift drink ever, which is bourbon and Coke. Nice cup. I love that. Very classy. Very good. After nine, ten hours of shaking drinks with people, the last thing in the world I want to do is grab a shaker. So it's bourbon, Coke, ice, and get to clean it. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Excellent. All right. All right. Uh, on to our fifth question. You got a Whiskey Wednesday coin? Please go ahead and select your favorite. Oh, that's the, is that the Black Nickel? It looks like the black one. Yep, Black Nickel. You can, it's my favorite. Uh, you can spin it, you can flip it, you can do whatever you want, but it's a yes or no question and the coin decides what their answer is. So you ask the question, I flip and determine the answer? Yep. <laughs> I'm not playing, man, but I'm having a moment right now. <laughs> okay, fire away. Does a sour have egg white in it? <laughs> <laughs> not because I have, like, I have a horse in the race, because I'm a horse and I'm opinion about everything. But the thing is, like, I don't want this fucker to decide for me. <laughs> but here we go. Here we go. We get. Ah, uh, that says fuck no. Fuck no. <laughs> okay, good. Now I'm just going to rant about egg whites. <laughs> well, that's. Uh... Next time you go and you need a sour, about halfway through, use your nose. Smell what you smell when it has egg whites. Sulfur? You go back to me. Let's call it rotten egg, shall we? Sure. No, let's call it dirty dog. No, wet dog. It's wet dog. dog smell. All right. Yeah, what do you. What, do you want that in your drink? So. I come around because I have a stinky cheese because the cocktail underneath because the bars we go to the cocktail underneath is and it has that velvety whatever yeah. but that top is it's you that's like it's like penance anyway <laughs> I, I love it I love it I love it <laughs> excellent well Michael thank you so much for joining us tonight that's our five drinks that's not even midnight we're all good thank you again sir it's been a pleasure it has been great. I just want to do one quick shout out because I got to get people, we got to do more things like this, more connecting. I do an Instagram live show every weekday at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And I just talk bartending, I talk cocktails, I talk craft. And it's a lot like this, but you just do comments and whatever can bring us together in this particular time. I mean, my part. Excellent. Thank you. Excellent. Tim, it was a pleasure. Thank you very it, much. It was a so pleasure. Much. And again, stay safe, safe, healthy. Uh, cheers to you, my friend. Stay healthy. Cheers. And all good things. We'll drink soon. Thank you again. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey guys, if you like what we're doing, don't forget to like and subscribe.